Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Back in business, traffic is flowing again from the Ambassador Bridge after Canadian officials reclaim it following an almost week-long blockade. But first here at noon, we want to get to some breaking news from Ontario, where the province will be moving to the next steps of its COVID-19 reopening plan on Thursday. This is actually four days ahead of schedule. No word was given as to exactly why they're moving ahead of schedule. The province will also lift proof of vaccination requirements at the beginning of March. Speaking at a news conference this morning, Premier Doug Ford said that the decisions were made based on recommendations from the province's chief medical officer of health. Also making headlines at this hour, the loosely organized Freedom Convoy demonstration shaking Canada began as a protest against the mandatory vaccination of truck drivers crossing the U.S.-Canada border. Now, they evolved to become anti-government and general anti-COVID restriction protests. We want to show you some video now of Sky 4 over the Ambassador Bridge. As traffic once again flowing there freely after police in Windsor cleared protesters and towed cars on Sunday. Let's send things out to local force Rob Maloney, who joins us now live with the latest on the bridge situation. And uh, Rod, you just heard the, the new news coming out of Ontario. Yeah, there is a new. Yeah, there, there is uh, interesting things. Have There are interesting things happening here. We have uh, an update from the Ambassador Bridge Company saying that there are problems with the traffic on the other side of the bridge. Now, we'll take a look at the bridge and we're seeing truck traffic going east and west. So that's the good news. But here on Church Road, northbound lanes from the Herb Gray Parkway and the 401 uh, uh, can only be accessed. So in other words, the Ambassador Bridge in Canada for outbound to the U.S. can only be accessed from the Huron Church northbound lanes from the Herb Gray Parkway 401 and Wyandotte Street, either westbound or eastbound. We're not sure why that is, but that's the information that they just sent us like two minutes before the newscast. But let's take a look at what's happened uh, over the weekend here, and then we'll update the other direction on the other side. It was a painstakingly slow and steady process. The RCMP, OPP and other police agencies moving in and yesterday announcing in a whiteout snowstorm. Any unlawful activity in the area will not be tolerated and officers will take the necessary action to keep the peace and traffic flowing. There will be criminal consequences for those who interfere with or interrupt traffic flow. And they dismantled the Windsor truck rally without violence. Trucks towed, some protesters arrested, and even though some persisted on foot, early this morning the Ambassador Bridge opened to truck traffic. Governor Gretchen Whitmer expressed her happiness at the weekend developments, saying in a statement, quote, this is a win for Michigan's working families who are just trying to do their jobs for businesses who can get back to shipping their products and produce. It's time to get traffic and trade moving across North America's busiest land border crossing again. And then she added simply, it's important to assure this does not happen again. Which is a similar sentiment expressed in a statement today by International Bridge Company Chairman Matthew Maroon, saying, quote, I'd like to thank everyone who came together to reopen the Ambassador Bridge. Now we must join together to come up with an actionable plan that will protect and secure all border crossings in Canada and the U.S. corridor and ensure that this kind of disruption to critical infrastructure will never happen again. Now, we've just got this information from the Ambassador Bridge in the United States, inbound to Canada. Huron Church southbound lanes are open to the Herb Gray Parkway 401. There are no access routes east and west in the city of Windsor from the Ambassador Bridge to the EC Expressway. All lighted intersections from the Ambassador Bridge to the EC Row Expressway are flashing red. And I think that that's a, a message to truckers looking to get more. But it, it shows that there are still issues here. Nothing is entirely uh, cleared up, uh, but we're still seeing traffic up here on the bridge. Now, it seems to be light. Could be a couple of reasons for that. Maybe the companies weren't sure whether it will be open often enough to get enough trucks going because it's usually a whole lot busier here. But we're going to be checking in with everybody to make sure uh, that we understand all of the things that are happening up here and where things are headed for the auto industry as they were uh, essentially shut down in many places over the end of last week. We also know that there's an analysis being done to find out exactly how expensive this was. We'll have that for you coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting live in Detroit, Rod Malone. All right, Rod, thank you for the update there. In the meantime, new and growing anti-vax protests inspired by the Freedom Convoy are threatening trade, threatening trade in the U.S. and other countries, even as officials reopen the Ambassador Bridge. 
CTV reports that at the Washington state border, police there are trying to keep the area clear after large vehicles broke through a police barricade over the weekend and hundreds gathered to protest. Along the border with Montana, demonstrators have been clogging traffic with farm equipment. Trade between the U.S. and Canada is hundreds of billions of dollars a year. So these demonstrations can limit what goes into your grocery cart. Let's turn our attention now to the coronavirus. We're expecting new data from the state a little bit later this afternoon. In the meantime, there is a new effort and more funding to increase vaccinations in kids and families across Detroit. DPSCD is the first district in the state to become an immunization provider. A $100,000 grant from MDHHS will create mobile vaccination clinics across the district. 107 vaccination sites are planned in Detroit. Nurses will provide students and families who consent the COVID-19 vaccines. In Detroit, the childhood vaccination rate is at 4%. That is far less than surrounding cities. Today's announcement brings a sense of joy and frankly allows us to know that the COVID fight is being handled, dealt with, and will ensure that the safety of my student staff and self is at the forefront of everyone's mind. The district's goal is to provide first and second doses at every school by the end of this school year. What we want to all right, let's get you up on, updated on the forecast now. Quite the difference from earlier this morning as we take a, a live look outside through our sky cam. Meteorologist Brandon Rue is standing by for us this afternoon. And when I say quite the difference, I mean we went from, from single digits to double <laughs> digits. Listen, anything counts in my book. Little baby step victories. We will take it. Just know that the forecast is 100% chance of love. That's it on this Valentine's Day. Hope you're doing well. Parts of our north zone just barely out of the single digits. 11 in Sandusky, 17 at Metro. Just a little bit of a breeze, but you can see it knocks a lot of our suburbs down into the single digits. We do have a few flakes and more cold air, so low 20s and just a spotty light snow shower or two through the afternoon evening. If you're heading out with your loved one, Evrod, or just running errands, shouldn't be too much. A nice warm up ahead. Well, we like the sound of that, Brandon. We'll definitely stick around for more details on that. We'll check in with him in just a little bit. We got to talk about the Super Bowl now because former Detroit Lion turned Los Angeles Ram Matt Stafford has completed his NFL journey to the mountaintop with a Super Bowl victory. Jamie Edmonds is here now with a look at what he had to say after the big win. After 12 seasons with the Lions without any playoff glory, Matthew Stafford goes to L.A., orchestrates another fourth quarter game winning drive to win the Super Bowl. Matthew, you're a world champion. How does it feel? It feels great. Matthew Stafford was surrounded by his family post game on the field and in the press conference room. Asked about his wife Kelly and what was going through their minds after the Rams beat the Bengals 23 20. Uh, just proud of me, happy for me. You know, she's been with me uh, through all these years and we battled so many things together. Um, you know, to get it done and have her down there with the kids and everything is, uh, is such a special thing. Stafford and the Rams trailed the Bengals by four with 6 13 to go in the game when Stafford and his favorite target, Cooper Cup, went to work. Matthew and Cooper made, made the most of their opportunities in the most important and critical times. I thought the offensive line did a great job protecting. With the game on the line, 79 yards to gain, Stafford and Cup connected four times for 39 yards, including the game-winning touchdown. That was actually a, a flip on the go that we hadn't uh, hadn't really worked on, Coop. Oh. And uh, oh. we, we throw every route to Coop except the fade. Uh, but tonight, uh, O went down and Coop just made some unbelievable plays on that last drive. and. Uh, that last play, I mean, I was so happy they were playing, man. I was just going to throw the ball to my guy. When the Bengals got the ball back, Aaron Donald sealed the victory for the Rams. Through so many highs and lows as a Detroit Lion, Matthew Stafford has reached the mountaintop. The view, he says, is pretty sweet. But he told reporters he will never forget his time in Motown or the people who continue to support him. Could you feel the love not only from the organization but the fans over this last month during this title run? Yeah, I really could. I, uh, it was amazing. You know, I mean, like you said, th th there's no reason for them to cheer for me anymore. And, and the fact that they did was just a true testament to who they are as people and who they are as fans. Um, you know, you played in the Midwest City, you know the deal. And they, uh, they live and die with those guys that are players. And 
To have that support all the way across the country here playing in this game means the world to me and my wife, my family. They helped us through a bunch of tough times and, uh, you know, are a huge reason I'm sitting here today. What's more impressive, the Rams were without Odell Beckham Jr., who left the game in the second quarter. They were without their star wideout, Robert Woods, and their starting tight end. And the run game wasn't working at all. That's even more pressure on Stafford and Cup to get it done. It's why Cup was the Super Bowl MVP. Back to you. Oh, and they certainly got it done. Thank you so much, Jamie. Uh, let's talk Olympics now as Russian figure skater Camila Believa can compete at the Beijing Winter Olympics despite failing a pre-games drug test. Now, the Court of Arbitration for Sport for the Sport announced its ruling early this morning. The ruling comes just a day before the women's short program in which Valieva is favored to win gold. Officials said the 15 year old does not need to be provisionally suspended ahead of a full investigation. The court gave her a favorable decision in part because she was a minor and was subject to different rules from an adult athlete. The cast panel in charge of this matter has decided to let Miss Valieva continue her participation in the Olympic Winter Games Beijing 2022. It means that no provisional suspension should be imposed on the skater. The International Testing Agency confirmed that Valieva did test positive for drugs at the Russian Nationals on December 25th, but the result from a Swedish lab didn't come to light until about a week ago after Valieva helped the Russians win the team gold. The medal ceremony was eventually postponed. A decision on the event is unlikely to be made before the games end. All right, so to come here on Local 4 News at noon, the U.S. National Security Advisor warns that Russia could invade Ukraine, quote, any day now. So we'll have a report from Kiev after the break.